our Mass in celebration. Glad to have you here. A uh, couple of things. In the bulletin, I do apologize that um, there I missed when I was proofing that it says the fourth Sunday in Ordinary Time, where the readings are. And it really is the third Sunday in Ordinary Time. Now, the readings in your bulletin are correct, just the label is incorrect. So I apologize that I missed fixing that, getting that fixed. Uh, secondly, I just wanted to remind everybody, masks above the nose and below the chin throughout all of Mass. Um, we're very grateful for everybody's cooperation for that. And the last one, um, which is a very important request in your prayers today, go Bills! Good morning and welcome all who are here and are watching via live stream. We welcome you to our Eucharistic celebration. There will be two collections today for the weekend, our regular collection and one for the school, both in the place of one of the three baskets. Our announcements, please see in the bulletin an announcement regarding public policy advocacy. They're in the bulletin, also on the side tables. Uh, this will take place in February. Uh, there are pamphlets on, on the tables around the church with some additional information. Please feel free to take one. On the weekend of January 30 and 31st, in the light of the coronavirus, we'll be doing a general blessing of throats for the Memorial of St. Blaise, which is Wednesday, February 3rd. And we'd like to extend a heartfelt thank you to all who have already given to our annual Catholic Ministry Appeal. We are 25% away from reaching our goal, and if you have not already given, we ask that you prayerfully consider making your contribution so that may, we may reach our goal. And lastly, this is a book, Do Something Beautiful for God. There are quotes from uh, Mother Teresa, Saint Mother Teresa. It's uh, no charge to any person or person's family. If you have not received yours, please let us know. We'll do our best to get one to you. They're running short. They're almost out. So if you haven't got it, it's very inspirational. Let us know. And as we prepare to celebrate, pray ourselves, let us turn our attention to the altar. With a holy sacrifice, the Mass will be celebrated by Father Joseph, assisted by Deacon Joe, on this, the third Sunday in Ordinary Time. Good morning. Our opening hymn is You Walk Along Our Shoreline. Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned 
in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on earth, earth peace to people, people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, Direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son, we may abound in good works through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, saying, Set out for the great city of Nineveh, and announce to it the message that I will tell you. So Jonah made ready and went to Nineveh, according to the Lord's bidding. Now Nineveh was an enormously large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began his journey through the city and had gone but a single day's walk, announcing, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be destroyed. When the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast. And all of them, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw by their actions how they turned from their evil way, he repented of the evil that he had threatened to do, to do to them, he did not carried out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A response to your song, teach me your ways, O Lord. Teach, teach me your ways, ways, O Lord. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God, my Savior. Teach, teach me, me your ways, ways, O Lord. Remember that your compassion, O Lord, and your love are of old. In your kindness remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. Teach, Teach me your ways, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice and teaches the humble his way. Teach, Teach me your ways, O Lord. Our second reading is in a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I tell you, brothers and sisters, the time is running out. From now on, let those having wives as act as not having them, those weeping as not weeping, those rejoicing as not rejoicing, those buying as not owning, those using the world as not using it fully. For the world in its present form is passing away. The word of the Lord.
Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Alleluia, Alleluia. 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 My dear friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Lord, you, Lord. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. As he passed by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting their nets into the sea. They were fishermen. Jesus said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. Then they abandoned their nets and followed him. He walked a little further and saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They, too, were in a boat mending their nets. Then he called to them. So they left their father Zebedee in the boat, along with the hired men, and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. Some people over the last couple of weeks have been asking me, Deacon Joe, when are you going to preach again? And I said, well, I hope you come on the 24th because I'm going to tell a fish story. A fish story. Or I'm going to tell a whale of a tale. I think you know where this is heading. Father Coffus gave us a wonderful homily last week about the call of the apostles. And the gospel has a second version this weekend. So I'd like to focus my attention this week on that wonderful prophet, the prophet Jonah, from our first reading that Doug read. This Sunday's first reading is taken from the book of Jonah. This small book of the Hebrew scriptures, or the Old Testament, is at once amusing, challenging, and consoling. Usually, when we hear the name Jonah, we think about the man swallowed by a whale. But the story of Jonah is far more than this. The story begins with Jonah being told by the Lord to go to the great pagan city, Nineveh, and proclaim to the people there that due to their immorality, God's wrath was coming upon them. Now, if you look at a map of ancient East, you find that Nineveh was located northeast of Palestine. Our prophet Jonah went west. He boarded a ship that was headed as far away as he could get from where the Lord wanted him to be. Why was he disobedient? It appears that he thought that it was too dangerous for him, a Hebrew, to be preaching repentance in a pagan city renowned for its immorality. Think of modern-day Las Vegas, Sin City. He hoped that if he ran away from the Lord, the Lord would look for someone else to do this difficult mission. A storm, a tempest came up while Jonah was on the ship. The mariners were frightened. They had never seen anything like this storm. They prayed to their gods for deliverance, but to no avail. As Elijah and our Psalms would say, no one responded because no one was listening. They asked their Hebrew passenger Jonah if he had offended his God, and then Jonah told them that he was trying to avoid the mission that God had called him to. That's when they threw him into the sea. The storm immediately stopped. Meanwhile, trying to stay afloat in the sea, Jonah called to God for help. God helped, but not in a very pleasant way. A large fish, a whale, came and gobbled Jonah up whole. Part of the humor here is that Jonah was so sour that the whale couldn't bear having him for lunch. So out came Jonah onto the shore. Perhaps the people of Nineveh would find Jonah strange before the whale incident 
but there is no doubt that after the ordeal, Jonah was bizarre. By the way, a side note here, the U.S. Navy, for those of us who are from a Navy family or, or we're in the Navy, men and women, the U.S. Navy has recorded a sailor who had a Jonah experience in the 1870s. He was spit out by a whale and lived. The true story is that they found a whale that was dying, so they processed it, and when they opened the whale, the sailor was inside, still alive. His hair was gone, his eyes were bulged, he remained blind the rest of his life, and his skin was bleached white. Like the sailor, Jonah must have been quite a sight standing on that seashore. This is where our Sunday reading begins. And I recommend to all of you this week, if you've got some time, read the entire book of Jonah. It's very short, but it is wonderful in the way that the dialogue between God and Jonah comes out. Much of it is quite funny. So our reading this Sunday begins here. Jonah finds that he has no choice but to journey to Nineveh and tell the people there of God's wrath. God's wrath is coming upon them due to their immorality and sinfulness. Now the reading says, and this is important, Nineveh is a large city. It took three days to walk through it. But after only one day, the people heard Jonah's message and repented and prayed that God would have mercy on them. The Lord wanted their conversion. He didn't want their death. So God did not carry out his plans. Now this really infuriated our prophet. Here he was telling the people that they were all going to die, just as God had told them to proclaim. And then God changed his mind. The little man, our prophet with a bad attitude, said, that's why I avoided you in the first place, Lord. I knew you were merciful and that I would end up looking like a fool. I wish I were dead. And with that, Jonah went into the desert east of the city. He built a hut for himself and waited to see if God would change his mind again and destroy Nineveh. God is merciful, so God provided some sort of plant that gave Jonah shade in the desert, and Jonah fell asleep. When he awoke, the plant had died. Jonah was really mad now and complained vehemently to God. God responded, you're concerned about the death of this plant, which is nothing more than a weed. Can't you understand how much more concerned I am about the 120,000 people of Nineveh who have repented? The story of Jonah is a great story because it reminds us of the depth of the compassion of our God for those who hear his word and respond immediately. The exigency of the word of God is the theme of all the readings this Sunday. St. Paul tells the Corinthians in the second reading, the time is short. Respond to the Lord today, because the world as we know it is passing away. In the same way, Jesus' basic message as presented in our gospel is simple. This is the time of fulfillment. The reign of God is at hand. Reform your lives and believe in the good news. Even though the holidays have now passed and the New Year's hysteria has subsided, we should continue the Christian attitude of always being prepared for the end of time, or at least the end of our time. 
We formulate intricate plans for our retirement. We plan great itineraries for our vacations. But we tend to put our plans for the end of our lives on hold. We hear the voice of God in our consciousness telling us that we have got to change some of our attitudes and some of our actions. But we shelve these thoughts until a more convenient time that may never come. The Lord, the merciful and compassionate one, forgives those who respond to his call. We would be rather presumptuous to think that he'll forgive us simply for our intention to someday respond to his call. Jesus came to save the people of God. He came to save us. Save us from what? The forces of evil? Yes. From those who would destroy anyone or anything who would do good? Certainly. From ourselves? Most assuredly. One of the great tragedies in this world is the death of people who reject God. God does not want people to suffer the results of their own choices. He is always open to people who invite him back into their lives. He sends prophets like Jonah, priests, deacons, religious sisters, apostles like St. Paul and his own son Jesus to convince us to let God into our lives. There is so much negativity in the world, especially right now. So many people despair because they cannot see a purpose for their lives. Jesus comes to give meaning and purpose. We must get this message out. Today's readings speak about the compassion of our Lord. The merciful one of the book of Jonah has now come to save those who are open to his love. Let me leave you with this, my dear people. The kingdom of God is at hand. Right now. Right here. As I've told you many times, this is the third week of ordinary time. This is when the hard work of the church is done in the time called ordinary. This is the time for us to do the hard work, either interiorly or exteriorly, for our brothers and sisters. May God continue to bless us all as we continue to walk towards the new, the new Jerusalem, the eternal city. May God bless you. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, 
true God, God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, who was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. For the church, that her preachers may be ready and waiting for every mission when the word of the Lord comes to them in the needs of the people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That stubborn and self-centered nations, or those who promote violence and discord, may, like Nineveh, learn to believe God and turn from their wicked ways. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that we may live in a world with our eyes fixed on the coming of God's kingdom, using its goods, but not fully, knowing that the world in its present form is passing away. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace of good and holy families in the church, and that from them the Lord may call the young to be fishers of men in our own time, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have asked for our prayers, who are passing through a time of sickness, impoverishment, or grief, that the Lord, whose compassion is from old, may remember them in kindness and grace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those in our road in our book of prayers, for our faithfully departed, for whom all earthly joys and sorrows have disappeared, and who now see the full picture of life in God's living presence, that they may be at peace in his sight, especially Mary Jane Bella, the three military men who passed away in the helicopter crash this week, and for John Freitas and living and deceased members of Holy Cross, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Now let's take a moment and pause and make our own private petitions. For these we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We unite these and all our poor prayers to those of the Immaculate Blessed Virgin Mary and speak them in the name of her Son, Jesus Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hand for the praise and glory of God. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, in paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father, Giving you thanks, he said the blessing. 
broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, Offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel, the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us 
with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. And since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This Mass is ended. Let us go out to love and serve the Lord by serving one another. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is As a Fire is Meant for Burning. As a fire is meant for burning with a bright and warming flame, so the church is meant for mission, giving glory to God's name. As we witness to the gospel, we would build a bridge of care, joining hands across the nations, finding neighbors everywhere. We are learners, we are teachers, we are pilgrims on the way. We are seekers, we are givers, we are vessels made of clay. By our gentle, loving actions, we would show that Christ is light. In a humble, listening spirit, we would live to God's delight.